So, I started a rumour during the Tory party conference. I said that GB News presenter Nigel Farage may well rejoin the Conservative Party. After he attended the conference in Manchester, he was mobbed by a load of people, wasn't he? The media wanted to know, they were all over him. Our political editor, Christopher Hope, even agreed to ask Rishi Sunak whether he'd welcome Nigel back to the party, and uh, here's what he said. The, the Tory party is a very broad church, right? I welcome lots of people who want to subscribe to, our, ideals, to our values. Yeah, I know. So there we go. And, and one of our competitors decided to do an hour-long phone-in off the back of that as to whether or not Nigel Farage should rejoin the Conservative Party. So that's what Rishi Sunak said. But after listening to Zuella Braverman's speech yesterday, Nigel did not hold back. This lot appear to be unchangeable. Maybe after they lose the next election and we get the, the real fight between the One Nation Remainers and the Leavers who want to become pro-business and low-tax, maybe then we'll get some idea whether this mob are worth supporting. Right now, I wouldn't join them. I wouldn't even vote for them. Right, so that's that then. But uh, would Nigel Farage rejoining the Conservative Party actually be a good thing? I think I'm a little bit more intrigued as to what this says about the Conservative Party. Um, we're going to be debating this very, very shortly, but it, it is a fascinating kind of side of this Conservative Party. So Nigel turns up, and the way into the Manchester conference centre, all of the press only want to know him. Rishi Sunak himself, seriously, could have walked past at the same time and they, they wouldn't have gone to Rishi. They'd thought, we'll get him later. We've got to get Nigel's entrance in. And then you see a load of people coming up to him, not saying things like, oh, Nigel, you know, you're dividing the Tory party. Oh, Nigel, we're going to... You know, or, you know, all of that stuff. No, not at all. Talking to him about whether or not he's going to rejoin. And then you have a load of Tory MPs who've actually subsequently come out and said they would accept him in the party. Do you think it would be a good thing for the Tories? What would that say about it? Does he appeal to a base of people that the current Tory party does not appeal to? To debate this, I am joined by political commentators Alex Armstrong and Matthew Stadler. Alex, I will start with you any second now. Uh, I'm going to be asking, of course, whether or not it will be a good thing Oh, Matthew, I'll go to you first. Why not? Hey, there we go. Um, so, Matthew, do you think it will be a, a good thing for the Tories to have Nigel in the party? Uh, no, I don't th think it would be a good thing. I, I think it would make the likes of Margaret Thatcher turn in her grave. Nigel Farage is not a true Conservative, Patrick. He's considerably to the right of what I would describe as sensible conservatism, a sort of conservatism that I disagree with strongly myself, but that can reasonably be described as sensible. This is desperate stuff, I think, from the Tories. This is the first party conference I can remember where the ruling party, the governing party, has been busy setting out its stall for opposition. They're clearly still terrified of Nigel. Nigel's a very effective politician. We know that from the, the, the Brexit referendum. He himself has tried to become an MP seven, eight times and failed every single time. But we none of us can deny that he's had a huge impact on the national stage. And this suggests to me that the Tories are running scared. We've just had a poll out in the last day or so, which suggests that they're 19 points behind Labour. Mm -hmm. Nigel Farage says himself, the Tories are gonna lose the next election. I think that's the most significant okay. element of this story. Okay, look, Alex, I mean, with, with respect, whilst Matthew has said a lot of stuff there about why he doesn't think it would be a good thing for the Tories to uh, welcome mm -hmm. Nigel Farage back into the fray, you could quite easily take what you said there and said that is why they need to get Nigel Farage back in. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, Patrick. I mean, just look at the reception he's had at the conference. Mm -hmm. He speaks to the real community roots of the Conservative Party. What Matthew's referring to is a group of Tories who are basically corporatists at this point in time, who have infiltrated the party over the last 10 years, who actually don't have any values at all. I don't know what half of the MPs in Parliament in the Conservative Party even stand for. Nigel Farage has clear values that speak to true Conservatives. What, Matthew, I'd love for you to tell me what you think the values of the Conservative Party are. I mean, and you also mentioned that, you know, uh, he's lost his uh, attempt to become an MP multiple times, but he was at that point leader of UKIP, uh, and of course, other parties that he's been you know, headed up after that too. And so it's quite a different battle if he was to become a Conservative MP. And there's plenty of seats, I know Conservative seats, that would love to have Nigel on board, a man that actually has Conservative values for a change. Yeah, Matthew, just respond to that. 
Now, <laughs> Patrick, you, you know me well enough, and I think most people watching will know me well enough to, to say that I'm probably not the best spokesman for any sort of conservative values. But as far as Nigel Farage's values are concerned, I'd like to know what they are. This is a man, don't forget, who ahead of that mm. Brexit referendum stood in front of a, a turning point poster, which I, I thought was deeply xenophobic, to say the least. This is a man who continues I, I, yeah, to... Yeah, I see. I do, look, I do, I, do, I do get that. I, look, I, do, I do understand that, and, and I can understand the optics of it. I, I mean, I would politely say that maybe what he could have done was just go and stand on the shoreline of Lampedusa instead and someone take a picture of what's there, and it would look yeah, very similar. Good. Bringing it back to the present day, this is a, a man who has obsessed about, about migrants and and refugees coming across across the channel. He has desperately tried to drag the debate to the right. And what he has successfully done, and I've already said, there's no doubt that Nigel is a very successful political figure. What he's successfully done is helped drag the Conservative Party to the right to the point where Rishi Sunak doesn't say, actually, no, Nigel Farage would not be welcome in the Conservative Party. Don't forget, Farage has been a bitter enemy of the Conservatives in elections gone by. He's taken, at times, millions of votes off them. So this okay. is desperate stuff at a time where the Conservative Party is trying to find some sort of soul and actually lurching further and further into soullessness. Well, go on, Alex. Matthew, I mean, I, I, I disagree. I mean, you're saying that the party's moving to the right. I mean, I think the political ground itself is moving, you know, so the Conservative Party is mostly a, a centre-right party. I think Nigel's views have changed over time. He seems to be a much more well-rounded man. He's got some very, very sensible ideas. And he's doing he's talking about things that the public want to hear. They don't want to have the uh, cigarettes and vaping banned. They don't want why the part why the Conservative Party banning things. It was a party meant to be a party of freedom of speech, the online privacy bill that just went through, the safety mm. bill, sorry. I mean, what a joke. These aren't conservative policies. So what Nigel is doing is he's 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 become a conduit. For conservatives that actually want to re return to the roots. I, su I suppose, I wonder if, Matthew, there is some truth to that, right? So, so you know, a bit of pushback on net zero, a bit of things about, about banning things, you know, the debanking scandal, I think he, he, he stood up on. He's, he's very strong on, uh, you know, the, the gender ideology debate as well. You've got, you know, immigration. I do, I dare say that if there was actually a referendum on any of those issues, his side would probably win, whether or not you think that would be the, the right decision. Like, obviously, you, you were against Brexit, you know, there was a referendum on that, Brexit won. I understand that you think that wasn't the right thing. But yeah, if, he, if he put each of those things to a referendum, I think he probably would win. I think the fact that Nigel Farage loves a fag, I think he still does, Patrick. You know him better uh, than yeah, I do now. I think, By the way... Yeah. No, Nigel and I used to get on perfectly well. He used to come and have a chat to me when we were both presenters on, a, on another station because he, like me, likes to know what the other side are thinking. Mm. That's why I appear on mm. a, a channel where I broadly disagree with lots of the things I said because I, I'm not a believer in, in no platforming people, within, within reason, of course, as the, ch as the channel has found out. But the fact that Nigel Farage likes a fag, I mean, he's not going to be happy, is he? I don't think you could ask him yourself, but he's not going to be happy with this idea of making making smoking illegal gradually. No, no I know. No, no, all right, fine. I think I think things like net zero is more is more pressing than the cigarette issue, isn't it? I've got more wine. That's well, got the wine. Net zero thing, you know, the, the net zero thing, I think, is so important because mm -hmm. yes, as I keep saying when I come on GB News, it has to be done in an equitable way. We cannot hammer poor people. That's not fair. Yeah. If if poor people like the rest of us are going to pay their pay their way towards net zero, they have mm -hmm. to be subsidised. But the idea that this Tory party is being responsible and thinking about the long term when what it's doing is axing uh, HS2 okay. and it's watering down green policies when we face an indisputable climate crisis, I think is crazy yeah. stuff. All right. Okay. Let's 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 laser like focus in on on the, on the matter at hand here. Then, so so Alex, if Nigel Farage join the Conservative Party or or led it, you think? Do you think they'd get more votes? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, I think the Tories are going to notice that when they lose the election considerably to the Labour Party uh, in a few months' time. Uh, look, the, at the end of the day, Nigel Farage is talking to people on the street every day and through this channel, I think, you know, we'll find as well. GB News has been an amazing conduit for, for Nigel's views too. And they're common sense policies. He wants to put out things and he wants to talk about things that really affect people, whether you are rich or poor. Yeah. And I think those are vote winners. There's not many people I speak to who are, are slightly center, center ground or center right that don't think Nigel Farage speaks for them. And I think that is what political parties are missing in this, this day and age. They don't speak 
to real voters anymore. They come up with lofty policies like Rishi Sunak is doing right now right. That, that really don't have any meaning behind them. All right, Matthew, look, final, final word to you, quite briefly. Look, if, you, if you're being honest, do you, do you think that actually if Nigel Farage was leader, they probably would get more votes? No, as I said, this is a man who himself ran to be an MP seven or eight times and, okay. and failed. If you were to parachute Nigel Farage into the Tory party, I think it would actually scare off a lot of middle England who the Tories absolutely have to cling on to if they've got any hope of winning the next election. OK, but both of you, thank you. Great stuff, that. As Alex Armstrong, there, political commentator, and another political commentator, Matthew Stadlin, as well. Uh, it is almost irrelevant to have that conversation. I say that with my eyes wide open, given the fact that I've just hosted a debate on it. But the reason I ask is it is fascinating. You know, a chasm has opened up with the Conservative Party now. Nigel Farage's very presence, and me asking a couple of MPs, and all of a sudden, boom, there we go. Oh, could he come back? Should he come back? What would it mean? And you think, well, that shows that there's a void, doesn't it, at the heart of the government at the moment that somehow needs to be filled. I find that quite an interesting commentary, I think, on where the Conservative Party is at at the moment.